All right, so today's a day, Wednesday. Beautiful day here in Melbourne. It's going to get to 25 degrees Celsius. It's uh, just early in the morning here now. We've got a beautiful day. Anyway, the plane's out in the sun. Looks fantastic. Um, so I'm about to give it its first shakedown, first test run. So we're testing LCH, the ignition, alternator kit, and the installation in general. So we'll fire it up now and um, get stuck into it. But I think the scoop looks brilliant. Um, low profile and uh, looks nice and sharp. Looks in keeping. And uh, plenty of airflow going to get in there. So as I said, the air will come along here and then curl down that nice radius there. And on the back side of the scoop, there's another curve that, scoop, that curves it down, directs the air down into the radiator. So it should work well. Anyway, I'll fire it up now and uh, we'll see how she goes. All right, so we're in the cockpit of our aircraft now, um, our Impulse 300. Uh, no problems at all, so what I'll do now is I'll hand the camera to Tony and, um, and you can see it running from the outside. But before I do that, I'll uh, put my foot in the brakes and show you the ignition, how well it starts. Alternator seems to be charging well too. Choke unfortunately doesn't stay out, it just spring loads back, so that makes it a bit aw awkward holding a camera, the throttle and the mag switch at the same time, so we'll see if it starts by itself. Alright, so master on. Feet on the brakes. There are chocks on, there are chocks on the wheels as well for good measure. Uh, fuel throttle set. I can't play with the choke. Now we have a key switch here, so unfortunately the start button is at the, on the con, on the mag switch, so it's going to be hot when I crank it. But in many instances with the um, ignition, it doesn't matter. So let's see if it kicks back. It is the engine is warm. You can see the temperature there. Okay, clear prop. Now start. We'll do that again. Clear prop. One, two, three.
Well, there you go. Um, temperatures were just above 80 there. I'm static. It's a warm day here today. So static up, static um, with high power getting about 80 to 83. CHT very low, just running around. Where are we? Where's my finger here? So not much higher than where it is now. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not quite full power. I am on the ground and uh, don't want to run it too hard on the ground. Um, but yeah, very happy with that. So this is looking good. Uh, temperatures are exactly where I'd expect them to be. Um, beautiful. Um, now I'll take the cowl off, take a look for any leaks, coolant or oil leaks, give it a once over, um, and then do a few more test runs. And then um, we're getting pretty close to giving her a, a flight, but I'll do a few more ground runs. Um, there was a couple of little bugs. Uh, tachometer's jumping around a bit. It's using the um, the Jabiru sensor. So I might adjust the clearance on that, double check that. Other than that, that's about it. Um, yeah, pleased with that. Uh, you can hear the the, uh, the water pump still pumping. It's just bzzz in the background, sounds like a quiet fuel pump. And um, so the beauty of that is you can keep the coolant circulating while you're, um, while you're letting the engine cool down, the coolant continues to circulate, so it's quite handy. One of the problems with the Rotax is if you get the Rotax really hot and then you shut it down, and of course the pump is driven by the engine so the coolant stops flowing and the engine can get hot and sometimes even boil. That's not going to happen here because the coolant is flowing while you um, let the pump run for a, a few minutes after shutdown. But uh, we won't bother with that right now because it's not that hot. Alright guys, I just thought I'd do a bit of a follow up video here. The audio on my Samsung phone is really terrible, I don't know why it's chopping out so much, so I'll just do a voice over here. So this is just a general overview of the uh, the latest install LCH installation we did here at Rotec for this particular customer. And I'm pretty happy with it, it came up pretty well. I just thought I'd just uh, go through and uh, look at some of these, uh, some of the details and features that went into this installation. Obviously across here you can see I've got the three uh, Rotec cylinder heads, um, the LCH heads, and they of course take all the uh, standard Jabiru componentry, including the valves, rocker arms, pushrod uh, tubes, and caps. And down here we have the common rail that's made of 32 millimeter aluminium pipe with six 5 8 uh, stubs welded uh, to create the inlet ports or the for the uh, the water coolant going into the heads. And on the end of those 16 millimeter or 5 8 stubs, I've got a, a flared end to stop the hose from coming off. And as you can see, I've got the coolant pump, the Bosch coolant pump, mounted directly to the end of that pipe with a short piece of rubber hose, which makes it quite rigid. But for extra measure, I've also used some very beefy um, ties and tied it into the frame as well, so it's going nowhere. So the cold water comes in through these three pipes on this particular bank of cylinders, comes up between the pushrod tubes, um, and then the hot water, uh, once it's cooled the heads, comes out this daisy chain at the top, and that'll, that daisy chain will then swing round the top of the distributor caps in this instance to the other side, where I've got a common tree that uh, um, allows for the return of both the banks merged together, and then, um, that'll go to the radiator, which you'll see in a minute. Yep, there's the tree, so it goes back to the radiator for cooling, and um, that's the hose from the other bank of cylinders, and that's my filler neck, which I can remove from that bracket and lift the hose uh, using that screw, lift the hose up above the radiator, and then check my fluids, and top up if I need to. If I undo the cap right where it is there now, the uh, the fluid might, well probably will spill over because it's right on the level of the radiator. So you can lift that hose up above the radiator and check your fluids or your coolant levels. You see here that I've got the alternator tucked in there as well. Um, gee, that, uh, that allowed um, good cooling to the top of that radiator and that flange meets perfectly with the underside of the cowl. And on that side there, that's the cold water coming out after it's been cooled. That water, cold water comes out. The reason I've got two diameter hoses there is because the pump has one diameter of nipple and the or fitting, and the radiator has another diameter. So I just have to make a sort of a step adapter to switch between the hoses. 
and that's the cold water coming out feeding the, the uh, centre of that Bosch water pump. There are the uh, four uh, captive nuts, floating 3 16 captive nuts, which make it very easy to attach the cowl to the radio, uh, to, sorry, to the top of the um, cowl, or the radiator to the top of the cowl. Uh, they work well, and that radiator, radiator actually just sits in a good position where it is now, um, but ultimately it's mounted to the, to the top of the cowl. There's my ignition, that's the heat sink, and that uh, relay there, that little 30 amp relay there, that's a normally closed relay that allows me to use a traditional P lead mag switch and um, get the switching that I need to switch power to the module. There's the hall sensor just tucked in there, picking up the magnets on the flywheel. And you can see there's the, uh, the alternator kit mounted as well, just beneath the radiator. So the cold air, the cool, the air coming off that radiator will also help cool the alternator. So it's in a good position there. It's a neat little package. It fits in all nicely and uh, it's a bit of a challenge because this aircraft actually has a fairly tight set up. Um, so yeah. Anyway, I'm going to uh, jump in the plane now and uh, demonstrate the, um, the air ignition. Now I was just touching the exhaust system there to prove that the engine hasn't run and it is cold. Uh, so this is later in the day. I test, did the first run in the morning, um, did a little bit more um, check, did a few more checks and now I'm going to give it a, another, and in fact I gave it a, a really hard run in the middle of the day. Now it's the end of the day and I'm just uh, going to give it one more run and I'll demonstrate the ignition while I'm here. Again, there's the start button there, one, one more trigger and we're there. Clear prop. Clear. Go. Beautiful. I'll put the cow back on this plane now and uh, it'll be gone tomorrow. Cheers. By scanning the QR code on the screen, you'll be able to join our Jabiru Gen 1 to Gen 3 engine Facebook page. We specialise mainly in the steel cylinder Jabiru engines there, the early ones, and there's also a lot of airframe talk there as well. Some good technical advice can be found on that page. So please join us. Until then, it's bye for now.